I've been building a radio control helicopter from scratch and this is the story of how I absolutely failed in getting the thing to fly. But it's a story that ends with me going back to the drawing board and building something that's ironically much simpler than this thing and yet it flies fantastically. <laughs> this was optimistically supposed to be the final part of a mini-series of videos that I've been doing this year, exploring the question, can you build a very simple RC helicopter from scratch? It was inspired by the concept of a tip jet helicopter, a craft driven by rotor-mounted engines instead of having an engine driving the rotors directly, which means a tail rotor is not needed due to the lack of torque. It's a very simple type of helicopter in theory. So far I've learned that you definitely need to make your helicopter as light as possible so that the rotors don't have to spin up that fast, which was discovered when I tested my Mark 1 machine, which was quite heavy. Moving on to a lighter wooden design with a fuselage and four blades, I progressed from a machine with no control whatsoever to a machine that could have a system of thrusters in the form of four small drone motors and a flight controller that would try to self-level the helicopter. So I thought I'd put together this video to show you how I ended up designing a terrible, terrible flying machine, how I subsequently went on to design something a lot better, and everything I learned from the entire experience. The last part of the helicopter I wanted to build before doing a first test hop was the control system. This system would use drone motors that would not contribute to the lifting force of the helicopter in any significant way, but would simply react to attitude changes to keep the aircraft locked in a hover without it drifting off course and crashing. The controller I decided to use was this, the Omnibus F4 V6, which came stacked with a Typhoon all-in-one ESC, which can take a variety of motor options. I might be using this in the future to build a heavy lift drone for drop testing aircraft, in future projects. Quite late in the day, I realised that I didn't have any compatible S-Bus receivers for my Spectrum DX9. Usually with all of my projects, I just use my Spectrum DX9, but on this project, I'm going to be using this, this random radio link transmitter as a uh, radio to control the uh, thruster circuit. So I'm actually going to be using two radios together to control the one aircraft, which isn't ideal. What I wanted to do originally was use the DX9 with two receivers, so having one on the rotors and having one receiver that's attached to the flight controller. Unfortunately, the Omnibus F4 V6 uh, flight controller doesn't work with normal spectrum uh, receivers, you have to have an S-Bus receiver. So that's why I'm having to use a Radiolink uh, S-Bus receiver um, instead of just the spectrum one. So now that I have the flight controller all uh, working properly on this small scale, I'm going to extend the motor wires so that I can actually fit it to the helicopter on some booms so that uh, you can get a nice leverage and hopefully lots of controllability from the uh, small amount of thrust that this is going to be, uh, that these motors are going to be producing. So I built some thruster arms for the motors and then realised that they weren't exactly very sturdy, so I ended up bracing them a ton. So much so that the whole machine started to resemble one of those very early flying machines from the turn of the last century. The ones that you might have seen fail quite hilariously. The next problem I had was when I was testing the motors. When bench testing with the props off, I'd experienced a common problem with multi-rotors where the motors would throttle up gradually on their own. I think I might have just discovered a fatal flaw with this whole principle of putting quadcopter rotors and a flight computer or flight control board on something with as many vibrations as this helicopter. It seems that when the motor vibrates, the flight controller reacts and all of the oscillations build a resonance and therefore the motors start to accelerate, which is a common problem or common thing that happens with quadcopters when you're building them. I messed around with some settings but ended up getting the same problem with the props on in quite a dramatic way when I increased the throttle to anything over idle. Thankfully though the phantom throttle up problem was not present when the aircraft throttled up independent motors when I was testing to see how controllable the craft was. I set up an arm switch which could kill the motors if anything went wrong so um, yeah, I was being safe, I promise. If you're a multi-rotor expert, feel free to comment down below and tell me what I'm missing. I'm keen to learn. It was still looking pretty promising at this point. My theoretical concept that I dreamt up was fast becoming a reality, but of course it still had to prove itself in the real world.
To finish off the wings, I covered them in a traditional style using tissue paper and a water-based dope. This is a very lightweight method of model aircraft construction and seemed like a good way to go on this aircraft. The rotors were mounted onto little 3D printed mounts and angled at seven degrees so that the wings could be set at this angle of attack. A commenter on the last video mentioned how they were a little concerned with the apparent flimsiness of the single wing spar used to connect the rotor hub to the actual wings. And they would turn out to be completely correct. Next, I balanced the rotors before heading out on one of the only dry days that week for a test hop. Well, I say dry. All right, I'm all ready to do the test flight, but it feels very muggy. And apparently there's going to be a thunderstorm in about an hour. I'm gonna wait it out and hopefully uh, we can get a bit of a test flight in. For anyone who uh, was wondering which country I'm from, take a wild guess. The rain was, fortunately, short-lived, meaning I could wheel out the helicopter and get going. I did notice that the covering of the rotor blades had soaked up a lot of moisture in the air, perhaps because the model aircraft dope I used was water-based and therefore didn't make the tissue waterproof. This wasn't the biggest issue, however. I've just had the biggest facepalm moment for a long time. I've forgotten the battery for the thruster circuit, or more specifically, I've forgotten the connector for the battery for the, for the thruster circuit. What an idiot. This meant that I could only try out the rotors on this particular test flight. It was incredibly frustrating as I had hoped to test everything together, but I did need to find out whether the helicopter could actually lift itself at all. All right, I'm ready. Oh, no, I'm not. I've not got the transmitter yet. <laughs> I'm gonna build the revs up. Hopefully nothing explodes. Wow, I can really see those wings twisting up. I wonder if they'll actually be able to lift it. I mean, I hadn't really thought of that. This was the very moment I discovered another potential flaw in the aircraft. The wooden hub shaft started to bend upwards instead of lifting the helicopter. Next, as I began to give the rotors a little more power, the motors sporadically lost power. The receiver had been placed in line with the batteries and power cables. I moved it a little distance away so it was below the batteries and had a more direct line of sight to the transmitter. This seemingly fixed the problem, so I wonder if somehow the current from the batteries and the spinning motion of the entire system created some sort of electromagnetic interference that affected the receiver. Deciding to apply the Jeremy Clarkson philosophy of more power fixes everything, I ended up creating some major oscillation patterns as the wings twisted. I'm still a little surprised that this didn't rip the whole thing apart instantly. At least that was a win, even if clearly I had a long way to go if I ever wanted to see this machine take to the air. Maybe it was time to call it a day, cut my losses and try a new machine. So this is mainly the reason I wanted to make this video at this point. I want to open up this project to you, the viewers, and to ask what would you do to make this whole concept work? Maybe we can work on this together. So that might be nice to do. Um, so yeah, comment down below, tell me what you think. How can we get around some of these problems? It was very frustrating that I couldn't get this thing to work after so much effort had been put into it. Um, but I couldn't just leave you, the viewers, without seeing something flying in this video. So that's why I decided to go back to the drawing board to design something new. This is a monocopter. It's a stick, a wing, a motor, and a counterweight. It's the sort of five minute build that got me thinking, why on earth didn't I make one of these things earlier? I discovered the concept while trawling through some retro model aircraft designs online. I downloaded the plans and built a model roughly to the same dimensions, but obviously used some RC gear and a brushless motor. The only control is throttle, but as it turns out from my surprisingly flawless maiden flight, the thing can be hovered very stably and kept in a fairly tight space. The wind pushes it about a bit, but you can just bring it down if it starts to get too far away. The reactions to this thing were quite amusing. My friend and frequent helper of this channel, Mike, gave me a hand with this part of the video and ended up flying the aircraft quite a bit. Can you explain how this works? Uh, no, I don't know how it works. <laughs> you explained it, but I've forgotten. This monocopter works in a similar way to how a whirling helicopter seed falls. The whole thing rotates around its centre of gravity and the fixed elevator pitches the wing at the correct angle of attack to create lift.
Although the monocopter is easy to fly, Mike's first flight saw him almost take out some onlookers, but instead the monocopter hit a tree. On the next flight, the spinning blade of destruction almost cleaved the drone in two, which would have spoilt the fun a little. The only real drawback to this aircraft was that you had to hand launch it from a pole held above your head, which really isn't for the faint of heart. We tried to be a bit more responsible by allowing the ground to do the work, but that really wasn't that fun or as reliable. Before talking a bit more about this craft and showing you some more footage of it, I'd like to mention this week's sponsor, Blinkist. I'm sure many of you out there are very like me in that, with so much going on and so many distractions around us, it's difficult to find the time to sit down with a book and gain a well-rounded understanding for a subject in the fields of electronics, engineering or science or whatever you're into really. I recommend that you check out Blinkist to solve this problem. Blinkist gives you key insights from over 3,000 non-fiction bestsellers. It works by condensing them into 15-minute reads. If you sign up, make sure to check out the book on Charles Lindbergh as it's a fascinating story. Also, there's a book called Hidden Figures, which is about the human calculators at NASA, and it's an important subject and a fascinating read, so it's great to be able to digest that story in such a short, condensed way and get all of the key points. The first 100 people to click through the link in the description and sign up to www.blinkist.com slash projectair are going to get unlimited access for one whole week to try it out. You'll also get 25% off if you want to get the full membership, which is a pretty sweet deal. The the trial is completely free and you can cancel at any time during that period. So yes, very pleased with the results of that particular aircraft and uh, yeah, I'm just amazed that it worked straight away after I had so much hassle getting this thing to work. It really does prove that sometimes the simplest solutions are really the things that I should be starting with rather than devoting so much time to something like this monstrosity. <laughs> For now, I'm going to be working on some new projects, so if you want to see those, make sure you're subscribed. Click like so that this video gets seen by more people and I am able to make more videos. And yes, I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much again to Blinkist for sponsoring this video and also to my amazing Patreons who allow me to buy motors and, you know, do bigger projects and more powerful machines. All right, I'll see you on the next one. Cheerio.